Now, in the midst of the grow your own area being built, I thought I'd start another project. Oh, spring's coming, what the heck? I wanted to put a really special water feature down. Now, there are lots of different types of water feature from fountains and ponds and pools and a whole host of others. Um, I thought I'd create a stream here, right nestled between these trees. This lovely cherry in the back. Of course, I've also got the hornbeam at the back. There's, a, there's an apple over there. A cascading stream down because when you go out for a walk on a, a woodland walk or, a, or, or on the cross of Pennines and you see these streams, this lovely bubbling effect of the water, the sound of it, the glint of sunlight as it cascades down. That's what I want to create here. Now, you think that that could be a bit difficult, but it's a lot easier than you think. I always say that at the beginning of a project. Uh, I don't need a massive pond because what I'm going to do is use the Oasi, which is a great firm that creates a lot of the, uh, the big good tech and also materials to create water features uh, in your own uh, gardens. I'm using a lot of their technology in creating something that means I don't need a massive area of open water. I don't need a mountain with the rain coming down to feed the stream as well. Uh, they call it the Oasi Pond Free Stream. Now, that sounds a bit of a contradiction in terms, but you're going to join me on the journey as I actually put one down. I'm trying to use as much natural landscape as I can, incorporating these trees in. This is the type of project you can create, even if you had a blank canvas terrace garden or a big stately home. Either the technology enables you to do that because you're taking some of the earth from the bottom bringing it to the top to create the flow to go down and again it's pond free so if you've got young kids it's pretty good because you know literally you can walk over it it's not big open water space but i feed the birds just over there so they're going to love having plenty of water nearby to keep themselves clean and uh, hydrated and of course the bees and the other pollinators that visit the garden and of course as parents because I can see it from the kitchen windowsill. So here, where I've got this natural slope, I'm going to be creating a pond-free stream. Now, we've got a short amount of time to put it in, and you can join me on this journey as I put it together. This is one of two water projects that I want to do to get into place for my, uh, for my garden before we get to spring. So, picture it. Beautiful drifts of water cascading down rocks and plants and it's all going to happen before your very eyes so we're just going to start by marking it out so that's the first bit done um all the area around the outside we have scraped off um a lot of the uh, the soil to enable us to see roughly the expanse now you can just about see the markings here where our stream's going to go it's going to sort of come in here snake in and then under here uh, and along in this direction and begin just here. So that's its movement around and down. And the first step is to take as much of the surface soil off so we know what we're doing. And then we're actually going to dig down at this point here because, you know, a stream doesn't sit on the surface of the ground. It sits in, in grooves and gullies, the way it's naturally formed. And that's what we've got to do here, is to dig down a little bit to enable the, uh, the, uh, the stream to work around. But we've got to put a sump underneath as well to be able to carry the water back and forth from the top section here, back down to the bottom. And again, we're trying to get it as close to the plants as possible. We need to do some underplanting as well, not too close to the tree. So I'm trying to get in my mind not only the journey of the water through the garden, but where the pockets of planting are going to go. But they're the easy bits. The other bits is the stone, the big stone that we're going to be able to put into position here to give it that more of a natural feel. So stage one is clear off and know the course of our water. And uh, the next stage is starting to dig to get the sump work and a lot of the other sections in. This is the area where I'm going to create a, uh, a pond-free stream. So no big open water. It's just really something that holds an amount of water at one end and cycles it from there to the top. So it just looks like a natural stream all the way down without having to have a huge open water expanse or big pond. So it's totally pond-free, but it is still a beautiful stream. Now, 
we need to have a weight of water. So we've dug this massive pit down here to be able to hold the water that we're going to suck up from here and take it to the top and then it just keeps cycling around, refilling the sump and right up to the top and then back down again following the stream effect. Now, I did say I didn't want any big open water spaces because I've got some kids in there. I don't want them really sort of like walking and falling into this. So inside the area, once the liner's down, we're going to put a liner in here all the way around. It's all going to be one body. It's the same water, except we're just moving it around. So I'm going to put these Awaza Maxima blocks in. It really is just, uh, they're completely empty on the inside, although there's some supporting structures. So I'll put those inside so you can actually walk right over uh, the water that's underneath, making it incredibly safe. Well, I say walk over, you could drive over these things, they're that tough. So I'm going to put Maxima blocks in, and then I'm going to put a pump in here to be able to draw the water that's in and around the blocks and take it up to the top. Now, here's a really good tip for any water feature that you've got that you're putting a pump in, don't just put it straight in because then you, you're reaching in to try and find it if you need to maintain it, turn or change the flow, the strength of the flow and things like that. You want to get hold of one of these. This is a pump chamber. So when you've got your pump all rigged in, you put your pump inside. Now, these slats at the back means it can suck the water through, but you've got it all contained safely in one area. And I've cut out a little bit here, as you can see, so we'll be able to put the, the you know, we'll put it in this way, of course, because that's where the holes are on that side. So it'll be housed nice and easy. And then I'll put some rocks in and around it. And if I want to get access to the pump, I can just lift the top up and just get hold. So it'll just be a body of water in here and the pump, which I think works really well. And it's these small things like this that you put in that you'll be incredibly grateful for later on if you need to get access to the pump or do any work or change, regulate the flow or anything like that. Now, what I've also done is dug a little gully way here. As you can see, it's slightly deeper. And again, this helps because the streams don't just flow on the surface of the soil. They actually have created their own uh, gully ways through erosion and the like from the mountains or the hills as the water flows down into the streams, the rivers, the lakes or whatever. And I want to create that same sort of thing. So the liner will go in here too. Now around the outside, I'm putting in this uh, Awaza uh, hose. It's an inch and a half uh, spiral hose. Spiral because it's part of the design, meaning it's really reinforced and doesn't kink. Um, and it's incredibly long lasting. I mean, I'm going to bury it into the ground here to be able to carry the water up. And that will be in the ground for years and years. Now, an inch and a half, that may sound a bit generous. But what I'm aiming to do is to be able to pull quite a, a large volume of water from the sump up to the top. If it was a smaller bore, you know, it generates quite a lot of friction because it's having to drag more and more water up. The bigger bore, this inch and a half one here, is going to make it a lot more economic in managing and moving water around. So that's going to be into the ground, dug in all the way around here, right up to the top. This is where the source of the water is coming out to flow down. It's really important you manage how water comes out at the start point um, because that'll help give it the flow all the way through. And this is a spillway uh, 15,000, another Oasi one, and it's incredibly good because one, it's very tough, so I can stack rocks on it and hide what it is so it looks very natural. But it manages the water flow. If I was just to put the pipe here um, and, and put it against a few stones, it'll be spilling, spurting, jetting all over the place, and you've got a bad flow right from the start. But this open mouth at the top here is going to splay the water, spread the water, meaning the flow down has an excellent beginning point to help manage its way through to the end. And that's what this wide mouth does on this, on this spillway. So there you have it. Big sump to be able to hold the water, proper pump, and of course pump chamber, really good wide bore hose to take it to the top. The spillway manages it as it flows its way down. The next job is to put the liner in before we put the rest of it in. 
And that is going to be a challenge and a half. The one thing about uh, landscaping and the great outdoors, during the summertime we're blessed with beautiful weather and we're not in a stuffy office. Uh, during the winter time, it's a completely different story. But you know, you gotta love nature. So the, it's funny really, within all the rain, this is the other project that uh, I'm working on. It's creating a pondless stream. Uh, we've done all the hard digging out, which is pretty good because there's a lot of heavy machinery that's been going around and we don't want to bog down the area, although it's looking pretty muddy <laughs> down there <laughs> at the minute, but it'll bounce back, it'll bounce back. Um, this former area here was paddocks and I think, I think at one point it was an ancient orchard because this tree here is probably not far off 100 years. So I think slowly they cleared all the plants to put the horses in. Um, and guess what? A horticulturalist ends up buying it. So where they cleared all the plants for the horses, I'm replanting. And this is one of the projects that I'm doing, which is a pondless stream. Um, if you watch some of my earlier posts, you'll have seen us uh, just look at this area and then clear it out. But now um, we've dug the hole for the, for the reservoir. We're starting to uh, put the liner in, which is never an easy job. Uh, often complicated, uh, in different folds and pleats. Uh, but the weather is, is not helping, it's making us very muddy. But we did all the digging before all this came down. So, um, so we're in a bit better place. But, you know, the wind is blowing. All the plants and trees that have got over there have just blown on the side. Uh, we're trying to move the digger and hoping it doesn't get uh, blocked in. We've moved a lot of the stones. Come and have a look at some of the stones that we've got in here as well. Um, it's quite heavy work but you know quite sizable uh, pieces we want to try and make this um, this stream look as natural as possible uh, this is polythene not the liner the liner is that beautiful beautiful liner over the other side the oasi uh, 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 beautiful liner um, and it seems really funny that we're managing water in water <laughs> but that's all part of it so we're creating a natural stream here that'll flow down keep following the posts and i'll give you an update now this is a stream that is, is more or less um, open water free. So that means you can walk right across it. Even the sump that's holding the water, we're gonna be putting the Oasi uh, uh, Maxima blocks in as well. So it's completely kid friendly, but there'll be a natural stream recycling water all the way around. I, I don't know, I don't need a spade. I don't need a trowel, I need a towel. Um, but follow us through, we're, we're, we're creating a water feature in all the rain and it's going to be beautiful. I'm going to get a cup of tea now. Now this is one of my favourite bits of the construction is when we started to put natural materials down and, and the stones and the rocks it starts to feel a little bit like a stream. Now if you remember we've dug down quite a sizable area here now that's going to be really our reservoir to draw the water up to the top and then keep keep coming around. We've used the Oasa Maxima blocks just in there and I told you it could take a lot of weight. Look at that, those heavy boots and these large stones as well. You don't see it but underneath there is a huge amount of water which makes it incredibly safe. Although that's really deep because you can walk on the top if kids are coming around and whatever there's no sort of open water for them to fall into. Now I've also put in a, uh, a, a pump chamber here as you can see just inside that's where the pump goes. It's an easy access to be able to turn the pressure of the water up and down, maybe clean the filter and the like. But uh, it, it just makes it so easy. And of course, we'll put some stones over the top of that and it will disappear as well. Now, we're starting from the bottom and working our way back. First thing that, that, that we, we've done here, the guys have put in, they put the fleecing in underneath and then the Oasi liner. Uh, that's got a guarantee of about 15 years. And you know, if it's guaranteed for 15 years, it's gonna be lasting years and years more than that. So it makes it a pretty permanent structure. We put a lot of liner over here at the moment because we wanna hold the water. It's one mass of water and we're just moving it about from the bottom to the top. Now we've, uh, we're putting blocks. We're starting from the bottom and working our way up rather than the other way around. Some people start from the top. I think because we're putting two tiers or two steps for the water to come down. That's, that, that's really important. I just don't want to gush at the top. It's just going to just flush the water straight down to the bottom and back up. By putting a tier, you know, halfway uh, along and then another one a little bit further down, that's doing two things. It's slowing the water, enabling us to redirect it, which is really important. 
um, and it, it, it's giving more of an effect because it, there'll be more sound as, it, as it, it splashes down and a lot more animation as the water comes down as well. So uh, the utilisation with trimming the line, it's starting to look natural at here and as we progress it's going to go even red. And then of course the final bit, and as a horticulturist I'm bound to say this, the planting is going to be something that makes a, makes a real pleasurable addition to the reveal. So there's a lot of work still going on, stones are in position, um, you know, catch up with one of our later posts to see how we're getting on. When I was looking to start creating this stream, I, I wanted it to feel as natural as possible, as if the type of stream that I find out in the moors or up at the Pennines, and you know, we've had the weather for it, <laughs> it has been born in, in wind and rain. And it's really coming together now. Obviously, a lot of the bigger stones are in, you can see here, and some of the gravel. But setting in the stones is, uh, is something really key. And I want to give you a really good hint and tip on how to bed the stones into position. Because these stones on the outer part are not only adding the framework either side and, and, and being sort of a bit of a support for the smaller stones that are within, but they're also helping channel the water as well. And one of the big worries, of course, is that you, you, you start your water feature and, and all the water runs underneath the stones and you don't get a chance to see it. So I want it to be above the stones and I also want to channel the water in so it follows a, a course because it's all about the fluid movement of water that makes a difference. I want to see the water glisten in the sunlight as it ripples over the stones, you know. I want to hear that tranquil sound and see that beautiful movement. So I'm actually using foam to bed the stones in. Now you may be thinking, oh, that's a bit of a cheat, but it really, really does help. Now this is not builders, you know, foam that, that, that you, you buy, that's those bright colours. This is a, a, a special foam fix, an Oasi foam fix and it's specifically designed for ponds because obviously it's completely safe as well so it won't take the water or, or harm any of the creatures that visit. It's also black as well so when it's in position and you've got the st stones over it doesn't you know stand out it almost looks like a, a shadow in the background and when the foam's expanded you can trim it easily to take off the excess foam but you filled underneath so the water's not going to be going underneath it's going to be up and around and you're lifting the water back in to the water feature so it's channeling and creating a gully way that pulls the water inside the water feature rather than underneath it but it's also bedding the stones in as well the good thing about it is it comes with a little applicator like a straw but you can buy this Oasi gun that goes on it which is incredibly helpful because on a smaller one, the little straw, that's it, the little straw works good enough if you're doing a small bit, but with a bigger water feature like this, it enables me to apply it more economically. So if you're thinking about building a pond, it doesn't have to be a stream, and all this bit about messing about with cement to try and bed the stones in, the cement falls into water, it taints the water, it's messy, this thing, where you're putting a little bit of foam around the base of the stones like that, and of course that doesn't stay like that, it expands and goes hard like this. But the good thing about the hard stuff, it enables you to bed some of the pebbles in to position as well. So the pebbles don't end up getting washed down the water feature, they're held within the foam as well. So it's, it's incredibly, it's also good fun. You put a few stones in, give a small squeeze into position, bed them into there, and then of course when it's dried and expanded, cut off the excess, put more stones around to hide it. It's holding them into position, and it's bringing the water where I can see it, not underneath the stone. So that's what I'm doing today, clearing all that. So you can get it, see I'll ask you foam fix, I even give you the gloves, which is handy, and uh, you can buy the applicator as well to bed in any water feature, whether it's ponds or the like, but it's really doing a good job with my big stones and we're halfway. Well, it's the big moment of truth. We've managed to uh, create all the hard landscaping down. Just take a look at that, different tiers and steps. So the water will cascade, move, snake its way around, bubble and, uh, and caress the earth as it 
goes all the way down to the reservoir and then it'll be recycled back up to the top. It's a real moment of truth. Now, the uh, Awazi pump that I've got there has got great technology with a control panel as well, enabling me to turn it on with an app. So are you ready? The moment of truth. Here we go. I can hear it working. Here it comes. Are you ready? Wow! Listen to that. A stream. And it's working its way down. Look at that from the first tier down. It's loading up the second tier. That's cascading. The next block is a lovely piece of stone. It's got moss over the top. I found it in the snowberries just over the far side. It's got quite a travel. It's a decent sized stream this. It really is. And the speciality of course is there is no big open water so you can literally walk on the surface of all of it. It's incredibly kid friendly. It's part of the Awaza technology. Uh, the pump is a marvellous bit of kit. Uh, you can control it, turn it up and pressure down put it to tick over where it just lightly bubbles or full blast which courageous down as it cascades. Isn't it marvellous? Something a bit different from a normal pool or fountain or waterfall. An actual stream as it comes down. And I feel as if I'm on the Pennines at the moment. <laughs> I'm on the moors. But the sound and the movement is incredible. And if I'm enjoying it, of course. The kids are going to really love it but so are the birds that visit the grounds. The birds will enjoy it as well as the pollinators that come to visit. And the water cascades down into the uh, Maxima blocks at the bottom, through into the pump that draws it back around to the top and out of the spillway, which is the, uh, the, the specific housing that uh, the water comes through. It's a lovely Oasi product that enables the water to spread really well at the top. And that really creates that fluid movement. But there we are. The next stage is, of course, to build the soil up around the outside. Uh, and the weight of that soil is probably one of the only things that isn't going to be blowing away tonight. Um, and then we landscape it, the fun bit, putting the plants in. But how marvellous. A stream in your own garden without relying on the mountains to bring the water down or a massive river or, or open water at the other end. It's going to be a lovely feature. So keep following the posts as we now start to cut the rest of the liner away and embellish with planting and uh, come back and see what the final result looks like. Hi, welcome back to an update on uh, creating the stream in my garden at home. Uh, if you've been following uh, the, the process of how we've been putting it together, thank you for following and I hope you enjoyed it. We're at a point now where we're just before we put all the uh, soft landscaping, as we call it in the trade, which is all the plants around the outside, but all the hard landscaping, which of course is the stones and rocks, such a beautiful thing. And bear in mind, this is, a, this, this is something we've created. It's not a natural stream. We've put all of this in, and if you've missed any of the earlier posts, please go back in my Instagram feed, and you, you can see us from start to finish, although there's a bit more to do. Um, so the water's cascading down. We've built up, we've put about four tonnes of soil around the outside, because streams don't just lie flat. Of course, they're in gully ways, as they've cut the way through the, uh, through the, through the landscape for, as the rain falls in the mountains and the hills, and brings it down. And I've put some of these rocks outside, so it, it lends that it's part of a bigger thing rather than just rocks in the middle. And when I start planting, I'll be using some of these stones as a, as a foil to display or have plants cascading over. We've dropped a bit of lighting in. Always good to have a bit of lighting. Just here there's an uplighter and there's a couple of um, lights into the, into the water itself. And this Awaza technology both with the, uh, um, the spout that helps the feeder at the top end here spread the water down right the way through to the maxima blocks, which means there's no deep water, so it's safe. Nobody could be falling in and, uh, 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 and drowning in it because it's just the stream itself. And all the other technology with the great Oaza pumps that we've got into position as well, it really works. Now, there's a little bit of landscape, and I'm going to let things settle for a moment, a bit of rainfall on it, just get things to bed in, and then it's the fun bit.
I suppose it's like baking a cake, you know. We've done the sponge, we've done the filling. It's the icing on the top, the horticultural elements, which is, of course, as you know, my favourites. So join us again a little bit later. We're going to let it settle for the time being and then embellish it and you can get a chance to see it all put in. What do you think? Do you like it? Do you like the stream? Is the stream the type of thing that you, you want to have in your own gardens? I think it's very different. I mean, I love ponds. I love water features and fountains. I love water in the garden. So do the, the birds that visit and a lot of the pollinators too. But let me know what you think and join me when we start to plant up a little bit later.